Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. The Indian car market has gone through lots of ups and downs and ups and downs and now, okay, we're not singing a rhyme, but now it is going to become one of the biggest car markets in the world, if not already. Anyways, today's video is going to be about nine of the most iconic Indian cars ever. So stop looking at my tie and let's start rolling with the video. Number nine, Tata Safari. The Tata Safari is much, 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 much better than the Mahindra Scorpio. I'm so sorry, Rohit Shetty. But the fact is, it's more reliable, it drives better, it looks better, it has better handling, it has better ride, it has lower body roll. I know both cars have a lot of body roll. Obviously, there's a lot of body roll on offer coupled with the fact that the steering has a mind of its own. But trust me, the Safari has so much less. Okay, I can see that old Safari with the punctured tire, but it has less body roll any day. It is just so much better of a car. I don't know why. It's massive. So parking this vehicle can be a pain in the ass and the steering just requires too much lock and turn somehow, which is a pain in the rear again. Rohit Shetty does not use that to start. Okay, probably Mahindra sponsors them. I think there was a video in which, sorry, there was a movie in which the Tata Safari was actually used by Singham. But anyways, let's not digress. The Safari is a true icon. You know why? Because it has the feel. It drives so well. It's an amazing looking car. You drive it, you get a proper freaking workout. The ride quality is amazing. It's very comfortable. There's a lot of space on offer. And because it doesn't have too many mechanical components, there's very little which can go wrong with this vehicle. And off we go. Yeah, actually wheel spins and torque steers as well. That's the amount of torque going through the rear wheels. But the good thing is that the motor redlines all the way to 4,500 RPM. Number eight, the Hindustan Motors Contessa. Now, of course, the Contessa is an absolute legend. You know why? Because it is a muscle car. India's first muscle car. India's second, look, last muscle car. The only muscle car from India ever. It's such an amazing beast. It has so much fan following somehow. But you know, it didn't really work because of HM's lackluster attitude towards car manufacturing. That said, the diesel engine kind of sucked. Can I say that on camera? There's absolutely no concept of NVH here. It sounds like a freaking tractor. It is so loud, it is so loud that trust me, right now I'm in Hyderabad. If I was in Bombay, I could hear it. The engines were very lackluster. However, it had a lot of space. It looked great. And you get the feel when you drive a Hindustan Motors Ambassador. No, Contessa. You get the feel in both. Okay. Yeah, you get the feel when you drive a Contessa because the hood is like 5.437 kilometers long. So you really don't know where you're going and where you need to turn. But you know, the whole suspense of the drive keeps you excited all the time and on your toes. I love the car. The feel of driving this car, that long hood and the overall perception of driving something super duper special is what makes a Contessa something which is buried deep into our hearts. The Contessa is an absolute legend. We need it back. We need it back. Just like how the ambassador is coming back. The Contessa needs to come back and it needs to come back ASAP. Because we don't have any muscle car. The cheapest muscle car we can buy in India costs upwards of a crore. Where is our crowd favorite? High speed stability is super duper awesome. In fact, a Ferrari cannot match this car in terms of high speed stability because this car doesn't reach high speeds. Number seven, Maruti Gypsy. Just one of the four Maruti Suzuki cars on this list happens to be the Gypsy. You know why? It's an SUV which can literally go anywhere. That's why people call it the Mountain Goat. It's light, it's easy to drive. And of course, that petrol engine loves to rev. Somehow all Maruti Suzuki engines love to rev. That's Japan for you. That's Japanese engineering for you. That is JDM. You know what's JDM? JDM is Japanese domestic. It has a terrible ride quality, not really a comfortable car, but very rewarding to the driver. So if you don't love people around you, definitely the Gypsy is something you can definitely consider. Anyways, the reason the Gypsy became so popular was because it was light and it was capable. It was efficient. It didn't drink too much of fuel in spite of being one of the rare petrol SUVs in the market. And off we go. This car has done 2 lakh kilometers. Motor revs really nice and smoothly. Gets very vocal in the top end. And that's why the Indian Army used a lot of it. The spiritual successor is coming soon. It is the Suzuki Jimny. But we need a diesel this time. Number 6, the Tata Nano. 
is the cheapest rear wheel drive car in the world it is the cheapest rear engine rear wheel drive car in the world it is the cheapest car in the world okay all these facts encompass each other anyways that said the tata nano was an absolute legend you know why because it came with the noble thought when ratan tata saw a family traveling on a two wheeler <laughs> See how unsafe that was. He decided to make a car which was really affordable for the people who really could not afford a car, and that's why he made a promise of launching a car with the price of under rupees one lakh. Now, as time passed, cost of raw materials obviously increased. But when Ratan Tata launched the Nano in 2008, he said, "A promise is a promise," and the car cost rupees one lakh. X Factory India. Well, X Factory means the cost of the car at the factory. Now, obviously. Logistics and all would have to be borne by the buyer, but still, what an intention to launch such a car! It was a testimony to frugal Indian engineering. Such a nice and fun to drive car, which failed due to multiple reasons like the fire incidents, the lack of an automatic gearbox, power steering, hard on the brakes. There are absolutely no brakes in the car, and also it did not have enough oomph because that 624 cc twin cylinder motor did not have. enough power to push the nano out on the highways however if you're driving alone with a little bit of spirited driving and of course keeping the pole bearers behind you could easily do 105 kilometers per hour when the limiter would kick in the nano is an absolute icon i miss it i wish it was relaunched but you know what tata corrected all the mistakes with various versions which came in later but it was too little too late first gear revving the motor Somehow the motor sounds nice, which is surprising. The initial version of the Nano sounded horrible, like a rickshaw. Number five, the Maruti Zen, the first Indian car to be exported. The Zen meant zero engine noise, although it had a lot of noises coming out from various places. First gear, almost 60 kilometers per hour, so no tachometer, but I have a rough idea of where to shift. It was India's first. premium hatchback in the real sense in fact people who were not satisfied by its peppy performance went ahead and plonked in engines from other maruti suzuki cars like the 1.3 liter engine from the s team or the 1.6 liter engine from the baleno making it either a e zen or a b zen that was the craze for the zen unfortunately The third generation of the Zen was in real in the real sense because the Estilo didn't have the charm of what the Zen stood for. And yes, the performance is so punchy. It is so much fun always driving a Zen. Revving the motor and here we are. Number 4, Hindustan Ambassador. The longest car to be in continuous production in the Indian market happened to be the Ambassador having a span of 56 years that like up the chappan we are off we spin in our hindustan ambassador and here we go 30 km per hour in oh god power where is the power it's so seven generations in the indian market although you know you couldn't really make out between generations because the updates were so small one of the reasons why the ambassador did not last when strong competition started coming in thank you hindustan motor and your lackluster attitude towards car manufacturing the gearbox is absolutely rubbish okay there's no concept of gear shift over here that said the ambassador is a body on frame platform car with rear wheel drive it's heavy but durable it's fun it has good amount of comfort on offer and a brilliant ride quality so much so that it became the official car of the indian sarkar and also a taxi because the rear seat wasn't a seat it was a sofa I'd like to return this. <laughs> the ambassador was also known as the king of the Indian roads. You can turn the steering any which way you want and just pray that it reaches the direction where you want to go. But the sedan which displaced it was none other than number 3, the Maruti S team. Which started life as the Maruti 1000 but became the S team when it got the 1.3 liter engine. It is such a brilliant car that I had not one but two in my family. You know why? Because In first gear, it would do 60 kilometers per hour. First gear, revving the motor, and look at how it revs all the way to 7,000 RPM. And oh my goodness, this motor is mad! In second gear, it would do 100 kilometers per hour. In third gear, it would do 160 kilometers per hour, and the top speed 165 kilometers per hour. 
This is the most absurdly tall gate car in the world. Why the hell did they do that? I don't care because that is what made me fall in love with cars. The esteem was the sole reason from the 90s car version which I had to the 2000s fuel injected version I had. Those 85 horses, the way the car used to drive, so easy, reliable and obviously it's a Maruti so you would get service wherever you would go. Where is Maruti service station? Hai kya? Hai. The S-Team was an absolute light vehicle. It had a very low seating. It felt like a race car. In second gear, supremely agile. No wonder the S-Team was used in rally. And it would love to spin its wheels all the time. Unfortunately, the car which replaced the S-Team, well, I'm not a big fan of because I don't have such kind of desires. Anyways, let's get to number two, which happens to be this car is an absolute collector's item. The premier Padmani. Now, first things first, many of you would be like, the ambassador should be before the Padmani. Well, no, 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 no. And I'm not being biased because I had one when I was small. No, I didn't have one. People in my family had it. The feel of driving this car is completely unparalleled. And it did such a great job. It was wonderful. Again, rear wheel drive, front engine, it had the feel, steering mounted gear lever, just like what Mercedes Benz has been doing off late. What a freaking brilliant car. I absolutely loved the Padmini. And I loved it not just because of its beautiful Italian design, but also because of the feel of driving one. The handling, the steering, the steering had so much play in the center head position. You could move it continuously and the car would not move. It was like a PlayStation back in the day. Around the corner, some amount of roll, obviously no seat belts on offer either. And yeah, the reason the Ambassador, in spite of my grandfather having one and me having learned on the Ambassador, isn't ahead of the Padmini in this list is because the Italians make better cars than the British any freaking day. Great response, back into third. The whole feel of shifting gears using the column mounted shifter is just something you really have to experience in life to understand what our ancestors have gone through and why they don't really like modern cars. Which brings me to the number one most iconic car in the Indian market. You guessed it right. It is the Maruti 800. The most iconic car, the car which has really changed the game in the Indian market. The Maruti 800 was such a legend that you could buy one, use it for a few years and sell it for a higher price than you bought it for. You can bet on it. This car did not depreciate. It appreciated, I kid you not. We had a brown one in the family, bought in 1985, sold in 1987, and we sold it for a profit of around 27,000 rupees. And the car price back then was around 50,000. So you can just imagine the percentage profit of buying a Maruti 800 back in the day. A wheel spin in a Maruti 800 is always such a good thing. In fact, owning a Maruti 800 was more prestigious than owning a Rolls Royce Phantom 8 Mansuri today. Just imagine. And you know why? Because you couldn't buy one. There was a lucky draw conducted by the government. Yes, Maruti started life as a government-owned entity, which was later taken over by Suzuki. But let's not digress. The 800 was easy to drive. It had a measly 37 horsepower, yet it was fast enough to go from 0 to 100 km per hour in just 14 seconds. The speedometer was marked at 140 km per hour. You could go beyond 140 km per hour that's how light and fast and frugal the 800 was. The wheels are not able to gobble the pothole. In fact, the pot potholes gobble the wheels. It was the de facto first car of Indian buyers. That's not all. In the 26 years of continuous production, it was the best selling car in the Indian market for guess how many years? For 20 years with 27 lakh units sold in its lifespan. Now that's amazing. Reason enough for it becoming the most influential automobile in India. 1500 RPM. I'm just guessing. I don't know what RPM. Look at the wheel spin a Maruti 800 is making because of this engine which is just fabulous. Well, that's about it guys. I hope you like this video. And remember one thing. This list comprises of cars which I have driven and of Indian cars only. That's the reason I could not put the boxy Toyota Qualys or the Hyundai Santro in this list. Well, that's about me shouting at you and moving my hands like a fist fight right now. But you need to tell me in the comment section which amongst these cars do you think is the most iconic. And all you ambassador lovers, I'm not sorry at all. The Padmani is still the better one.